Uh, meanwhile, what also happened is that the coking coal and iron ore prices have been falling. So the cost of production also came down. That is actually helping them to sell it at even lower prices. The ban on iron ore mining in India at places like Goa and other states has meant that the cost of production is higher than in China. And this is making steel products here unviable. To address this issue, the government imposed an anti-dumping tariff on some Chinese products last month and it also increased the import duty by 2.5%. But the industry feels that these steps won't help. The 2%, 5%, all these so-called small percentages, uh, the exporting country absorbs or makes some kind of price adjustment because they have so much of surplus steel. The remedy lies in looking at the structure of pricing in India. You need to look at the excise levels, you need to look at how the steel is priced. Because if you actually look at the price of steel, a large chunk of uh, the cost of steel goes into the taxation. For now, India's steel firms are hoping that demand will rise significantly in the near future. That would help lift the gloom and initiate the recovery process. But for the industry to achieve sustainable growth in the long run is still a challenge. A look at the challenges to the steel industry there. Now, Indian cricket is not short of scandals. But last week, the multi-billion dollar Indian Premier League suffered perhaps its biggest crisis yet. The league has eight teams and now two teams have been suspended for two years over a corruption scandal. Officials from Chennai Super Kings and Rajasthan Royals were found guilty in an illegal betting and match-fixing probe. The panel also suspended Royals co-owner Raj Kundra and Gurunath Mayyappan of Super Kings from all cricket-related activities for life. The IPL is the richest of the world's T20 cricket leagues and is a huge hit among fans here and around the world. So can it continue? I caught up with Indranil Das, Chief Operating Officer of Sports and Entertainment Management Firm CAA Kwan, and began by asking him what impact will this verdict have on IPL's brand image? I don't think you could have had a harsher verdict. I don't think you could have had a greater impact on the IPL. Uh, fact is that it is an eight uh, team competition. Out of eight teams, you take away two teams, including the most high profile team, which is uh, Chennai Super Kings. You will obviously have a huge impact on the IPL and the brand of the IPL. Financially, what does this mean for the tournament? Will this lead to a loss of revenue? The way things stand, it will lead to a loss of revenue. Your biggest source of revenue for the IPL, or for that matter, most sports properties, is your broadcast rights. Uh, Sony has a contract with the BCCI uh, which stipulates the number, minimum number of matches and minimum number of teams. Now obviously if you reduce the matches from 64 and reduce the number of teams from 8 to 6, uh, Sony will not have in enough inventory to sell. It could be ad time, it could be to sponsors. So it will have a severe impact on those financials. And moment those financials are impacted, which is the majority chunk of the revenue coming into the BCCI and then flowing into the, the uh, other franchises, the whole model sort of collapses or is in a fragile position. So uh, financially, uh, the IPL will go through a very, very difficult uh, situation over the next two years. This also opens an opportunity for other individuals who want to buy a team or and if, if the administrators do decide to induct two more teams that means you could have fresh auctions. In that sense do you think this time around the valuations will be much lower compared to the previous auction? No two ways about it. I think uh, if you look at the previous auction, teams were sold at close to 400 million. You are not going to get those same rates uh, that the IPL sort of demanded even four years ago uh, because one, the market is not ready for it. Secondly, because the IPL as a brand is tainted and uh, seen as corrupt. Thirdly, it's lost credibility. And I think a lot of people out there realize that this will be a distress sale. So they will try and get the best bang for their buck. Uh, so in terms of valuations, uh, it won't be as high as you've seen previously. Now I want to talk about specifically sponsorships because companies have been associated with this tournament in a big way, whether it's at the league level or at the team level or franchise level. Do you see that changing now? Will companies, firms, brands be wary of associating themselves with this league in, in whatever manner? They I think brands are already sort of uh, 
wary of associating with the IPL, especially after last year. So IPL 6 and 7 didn't have the kind of big bucks flowing in terms of sponsorships the same way the previous years had. So brands have always been wary. But having said that, there is no bigger entertainment property in the country than the IPL. So sponsors will be there. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately in cricket, every time you have one sponsor backing out, you will have at least 10 others willing to take their place. Uh, cricket is extremely cluttered uh, and there are a whole lot of takers who want to pile on to the cricket bandwagon. So I think sponsorships will take a temporary hit. I think sponsors will wait and watch to see what exactly is going on. But come IPL uh, 2016, closer to that date, I think you'll still see a lot of sponsors lining up, both centrally and uh, per franchise-wise. Indranil Das of CAA Kwan speaking to me earlier. Now, last week, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched his latest initiative to create more skilled workers. His government